In this video, we're gonna paint some power weapons. All right, it's time to do this relic blade and I'm gonna paint it just like a power blade anyway, or power weapon. So I got two more power weapons here that uh, we're gonna be working on at the same time. So I've done some power weapons before in my death watch. And so this is my black shield and the power weapon that I did for him. And I want to do these other three in a similar style because I enjoy it. And uh, I think the consistency between the models will be nice. So we're going to have a main color. And then we're going to work downward in some darker gradients. And then we're going to work upward. And we're going to do this through glazing. All right. So my mid-tone is going to be enchanted blue. This is going to be the foundation of the scheme I'm doing for these blades. Then working downward, we're going to do festering blue, which was a darker blue. And then for the darkest bit now down near the hilt, we're going to use this nauseating blue, which is actually more of a purple. And then heading in the other direction, we're going to use electric blue. And then for my brightest color, we're going to do a combination of white and electric blue. All right, we're going to start this process by base coating with electric blue. I'm going to have to do two coats of this. Throughout this whole video, I'm going to be using the same process on all three models. You won't see me do it on all three models every single time. There's a lot of different methods for doing uh, power blades and a lot of different schemes. I choose to do it this way because I don't have an airbrush and every time I've tried wet blending on such a small surface, it's always messed up. So I do, I guess, a form of lazy glazing. All right, with the base coat laid down, time to start working some glazing. So I'm gonna take this festering blue and some glaze medium from Vallejo. I'm gonna make a glaze. All right, so here's my wet palette. I'm gonna take a little bit of the festering blue and get it onto my palette. You don't need a lot because this is gonna end up being very thin and we're gonna be adding glaze medium and water, which is going to fill it out. This can take a lot of space on your palette. All right now I'm gonna take some of the Vallejo glaze medium. All right, gonna shake it up real good and put a comparable amount of this glaze medium into the festering blue. I want a pretty close to 50-50. The technique that we're using here requires a very thin consistency. And then I'm going to take the brush that I use to get paint out of my pots and mix it. And I'm gonna uh, fill it with water. Like I'm not gonna shake it off too much. And then I'm going to mix the water, the paint, and the glaze medium all together on the palette. Different paints have a different consistency coming out of the pot. So it's kind of hard to give an exact ratio. But uh, what you're looking to do is once you get it mixed up, take uh, the brush you're going to be glazing with and fill it with paint. Um, you may even want to fill it a little bit more than what you would normally expect to. Um, and then you're going to take that brush and you're going to wick out most of the paint onto a piece of paper towel. So I usually flip the brush over and do it twice. And then you're going to paint this over your fingernail. And you're looking for a transparent consistency, something along this lines. I had trouble getting the camera to focus. Like, if it's thicker than that, then add some more glaze medium, add some more water. And if it's much thinner than that, if you went overboard, you can always add some more paint. All right, so I'm going to kind of mentally divide the blade into thirds. And then starting at the top of the lower third, I'm going to run the body of the brush down the side of the blade. And this is going to apply a very thin layer of the paint that's going to be more concentrated at the bottom where I pull it off. And now the trick to this is, is once you put down that layer, don't mess with it and let it dry completely. And we're going to repeat this process sometimes altering where we're going to start the pass and over many layers build up the opacity so that there's an interesting transition and while i'm waiting for that to dry i'm going to take my electric blue and do the same thing i'm going to work on the other side of the blade so i made the glaze the same way wicked it out on the paper and i'm using the body of it and i'm running it along the top third of the blade and i'm going to do this many times over an extended period of time 
until I get a result that I enjoy. And if you uh, run it over less of a surface each time, then the opacity is going to build up towards the direction that you want the effect and you'll get an interesting transition and the more time you spend on this the better transition that you're going to get and so after that dries i go back and i do the bottom portion now because i'm shooting from more of a tabletop standard like i'm looking at this two feet away i'm not as worried about the smooth transitions so i'm not varying the starting point as much and i'm not doing as many layers all right so that's how it looks after all doing this a bunch of times so i'm actually going to go back and do a couple layers more from the center of the blade just to ease the transitions a bit all right i repeated that process until i was happy with the result now i'm going to make a glaze out of the nauseating blue and keep working on the darker portion of the bottom and i'm going to mix the electric blue and the Vallejo white and make a glaze for the very tip. So again, I'm just going to do an even less of a surface here on the very bottom to darken it out. And then I'm going to repeat this process for the tip and I'm just going to do the very tip to make it even brighter up here at the top. I'm going to do this many times over many thin coats. And depending on the effect that you want, you can create intermediate layers, colors in between these, and glaze those. And you could spend hours or days doing this and just have really smooth transitions and a lot of different color variants. I don't want to spend that much time on it because my goal is to get cool looking models on the table to play with. So I am doing, you know, just a couple hours of this and uh, until it's something that I am really happy with, but you can go all out and have some just really amazing looking power weapons if, by doing many different color gradients over many layers. All right, I'm pulling out some blue wash here. I'm gonna run this in the area with the lettering just to make the lettering pop a little bit more here on the relic blade. I'm grabbing a couple of metallic colors to do the kind of rod that looks like it's supplying the power to the power weapon. I'm gonna do this off camera because it's really tiny and I don't wanna mess it up. All right, once I got to this point, I was pretty happy with these power blades. Um, and I pulled out my black shield just to do kind of a comparison. And, uh, you know, I like how they all fit together and the consistency between them, and it makes me really happy. So just to kind of illustrate a point, uh, here is my sergeant with a xenophage blade and you can see I did the same style but instead of blues I did greens and yellows. So you can use this technique to do all kinds of different effects with different sets of colors and it just kind of depends on what you are going for and you know what makes you happy looking at your models. Well, that is how I have been hobbying lately. If you would let me know how you've been hobbying lately down in the comments below I would love to take a look at it.